This is my motorbike carrier that I picked up recently. The whole idea of getting a motorbike carrier is so that I can have a small motorbike, either a 125cc or perhaps a 250 um, on the back of the van, so that when we get to uh, an area where you've got lots of small towns, you can take the motorbike off the back and use that to explore the towns and villages rather than driving the big van around. I know of course you could have a push bike but I'm more of a motorbike person. If you follow the channel you'll understand. It needs a little bit of work and that's what this video is going to be about. I've been looking for a motorbike carrier for a while now and I saw this one come up on Facebook Marketplace and I instantly bought it even though it does need quite a bit of work. I thought you know what, you know, it's going to take me ages to make something like this, welding it up and making sure it's all structurally sound. I might as well just buy one already made second hand. You'll see it's got this rubberized coating on it and it's all cracked and in a few places it's starting to rust underneath. So to restore this properly I'm going to peel all this coating off and start again, take it all back to bare metal. you see under there. Needs a bit of work. On the underneath of this it's got these three brackets. They need to be remade. So let's start by taking the light board off and then I'm going to take these aluminium pieces off. I'm not even going to entertain the idea of removing these bolts, they're so rusty. I'm just going to cut them off. got the majority of this plastic coating off with a scraper. I've now got a wire wheel on my grinder and I'm just going to use that to clean up the metal and get rid of anything that's left on here. This one's all bent up and all rusty so I'm going to cut this off, um, get some new metal and weld on a new bracket. It doesn't actually need this middle bracket. Let's get rid of this middle bracket completely. get this plastic out of the corners, I'm just going to melt it. So I did have a U bracket on here to hold the ramp in the middle, but I feel that's a little bit unnecessary um, if you've got a bracket either side with a bolt going through. I'm going to put a score mark in this so it should help us bend it. Let's get 
our measurement across there to get that measurement. Let's add that onto the end. Just cut it down to there, and then I should be able to put this end in the vise and bend it so we've got this U shaped bracket. This bracket here needs to be parallel with this beam, so if I measure from this bar up, it's 35mm. So from this here, it should be 35mm to the top. So I've just marked 35mm from the top there. I'm going to cut this off. Honestly, if you're looking at getting a welder, this MiG-180 is a fantastic machine. Now I just need to drill a hole through and weld a captive nut on the back side, so that way you can screw a bolt in here to hold this ramp on, the loading ramp. Let's drill a pilot hole. I'm going to open this hole up so that we can weld this captive nut on the other side. a brand new number plate board so here I've got a new one but it's slightly smaller than the other one so I'm just going to extend these brackets out a little bit here so we can bolt this on it's got a load of drain holes on the bottom of this and I'm actually going to open them up now there is a method in my madness and I'll show you that a bit later on in the video. Now I'm going to get some of my rust converter. I use Vactan. It's a pretty good rust converter. Give it a good shake up. This is fine here. It's nice clean metal, but this area here where it's pitted, I'm just going to get some rust converter and paint that on. There we go, that's the rust converter painted on. As you can see, it's this bluey sort of colour at the moment. We've removed all of that plastic coating and I've painted any areas where there might still be a little bit of rust in the metal. So now I'm going to paint it with red oxide primer. It's best to drill any of the holes beforehand. So here I'm just drilling a couple of holes for the number plate board and that way the insides of the holes will be coated in paint just to stop it going rusty. I'm just going to give it a quick clean up with some isopropyl alcohol. It's like a panel wipe, just rubbing alcohol. And that's the first coat of red oxide primer down. I'm going to let that dry and then give it a second coat before the top coat of chassis paint. It's had two coats of red oxide primer and now I've got some black chassis paint I'm going to use as a top coat. It's a satin finish so hopefully it should look nice. That's the second coat of our black chassis paint. 
I quite like the finish of this stuff, um, but we'll see how durable it is in time. It's really soft at the moment, so I'm going to give it a good 24 hours to harden before I do any more work on this. This acid is typically used for cleaning mortar and bricks, so I diluted it down and I'm just going to paint it on this alley and leave it, see what happens. And as you can see, it didn't really work. So I resorted to using a buffing wheel with some polishing compound and water. That polished the aluminium up nicely and got rid of any of that surface corrosion. I use a small gas stove to warm through a tin of wax oil. I've had a few complaints in the past about doing it this way because it's a naked flame on the tin. So if you're one of those people, maybe use a saucepan with water in it and then put the tin of wax oil inside the saucepan so it's not on a direct flame. If you decide to do it this way, just make sure you take the lid off so the tin doesn't explode. That's our wax oil thinned down. We can get this, I've got to be careful because it's hot. And just pour some inside this tubing. We'll do the same with this one. And this one. If you want to thin it down a little bit more, to make it go further, you could put some white spirit with it. You have to work fairly quickly because it will be drying as you're pouring it in. And now I'm going to pick the framework up. And give it a good coating inside. Like you're making an Easter egg. Another t-shirt ruined, that's okay. I'll do it for you guys. And you might find in the summertime that you get a few drops of wax oil come out of this framework. But that's okay. You just know it's coated nicely on the inside of this and it won't be going rusty because that's the main enemy here. This is the best bit where you get to put it all back together. strips behind here so that when we bolt it down it's not going to be rubbing against the paintwork. And there we go, job done. I'm going to go pull the van in and we can attach it, see what it's like. like a disco. That's a bad earth I think. When taking the rear light cluster off I found lots of corrosion on the lamp holder so I swapped that out for a new one on both sides. Unfortunately we still have the problem. It has improved but it's still not perfect so it's going to need a little bit more fault finding on that one to get to the bottom of it. Because I needed a number plate for the motorbike carrier, I thought I'd get a couple of new ones for the van and then use the old one for the carrier. The bumper's going to have to come off for now, so we can put this upright piece in. At the moment, it hits the bumper. It's definitely going to need some adjustment, but let's see how we get on with it like that. The idea is this section here comes down on the saddle on the motorbike. Put it down there for now. Now I'm off to see a motorbike later today so hopefully it's a good one and I'll be able to use this to bring it back and I'll show you what I pick up in the next video if I decide to buy it. Thank you for watching as always I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already subscribed if you click the little alarm bell you'll get notifications when I post new videos. I hope to see you in the next one where I'll be showing you the new project bike. Cheers guys, bye for now.